Hello all and welcome to a special edition of PKR TV. I'm Dansky, we're here in the Fox Poker Club in London, and we are lucky enough to be joined by the new addition to Team PKR Pro, Jake Cody. That was fair, okay. Uh, Jake, welcome to PKR and welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, we'll kick it off first by going back to the beginning. Um, how did you get into poker and uh, how long ago was it? It was, when I say the year, it sounds like a long time. It was seven years ago now. Oh, maybe even eight years, seven or eight years ago, which I don't know where that time has gone. It's kind of scary actually thinking about that. I guess most players have a background just before they get into poker. What was your route in? A um, bit of a mixture, actually. Uh, me and Matthew Perrins, who's like one of my best friends I've known him since I was two years old, went to the same primary school together, same high school, same class, everything. Uh, we actually played for a pool team for our local pub. Um, and every Monday we used to have a five pound poker game. Well, that's how like we got introduced to the game. And we actually played a bit of cards at school. So I guess kind of that's a bit of a background. And then that's how we got into it. Moving forward to your first major win, that was EPT Dover, right? That's right. And uh, that was uh, a little bit over 850 grand. Just before you got to that final table, what stage were you, were you at in your poker career? Well, basically before that, I'd had um, a few months previous to that, I'd had a really big score online. I won 200,000 online in a, tournament but before that I'd had like two three years of being pretty much like a mid-states grinder with potential but like things hadn't, hadn't quite clicked I was a winning player and I was winning like a lot but um, I hadn't like taken like the next step to try and become a great player and uh, at that final table I mean that was your first experience presumably of that kind of atmosphere. Yeah, for sure, with all the cameras and like the whole TV table set up. That was the first time I've ever played one of those. Um, and I've seen you say that, you know, when you play these big tournaments, you get so deep, you don't really look at the payout structure because no. you're not really interested except to kind of exploit other people. But, I mean, you must have known at, at that point that this was going to be the big change for you. Was there any pressure? Yeah. Um, I didn't look at the money the whole tournament. And I remember um, I really wanted to buy um, the car that I've got now. And I remember looking at what place I needed to get the car when there was six left. I remember, remember uh, thinking, like, I've, I've got enough to buy the car now. <laughs> right. But that was the only time I looked at it. Um, and at that final table, you became uh, kind of famous on PKR um, already for your defeat of the eventual runner-up, uh, Teodor Caraba, yeah. better known on PKR as Gold Knight HD. Now, this guy uh, was a, a very outspoken player. He was a bit of a villain. Player. Yeah, he was very much a villain, a talented cash game player. Um, and a young, fierce guy, but uh, had a lot to say for himself. I'm just wondering what he was like at that table, what the experience that was playing him That surprises me. If, if I didn't know that about him, I wouldn't have thought that at all. He was very, very quiet at the table and seemed like quite polite and well-mannered, so maybe it's just, that's just his online like personality <laughs> that comes out. Could he play? Um, you could tell he was a cash game player, for sure, but you could tell he was a good player. Um, I think... The way he played was correct for his, um, his seat draw and his um, chips that go into the final table. I think he, it was right the way he played. Um, now, uh, you then went on to, uh, to win two huge tournaments which completed your triple crown. Um, but out of those three, what's the career highlight for you so far? I really didn't think anything could beat the EPT because it was my first one. But I think the 25k heads up has to be the best one really. I had all my friends there, everyone was, had like, loads of support which I'm still I'm really thankful about. And just an amazing experience to complete the Triple Crown for all my friends and in such like a prestigious tournament too. Uh, the Triple Crown, um, it's more of a construct really, certainly the press love it. Um, how important is something like that to you compared to winning all the money? I'm not like that, I'm not like, I don't, I'd care about um, the bracelets, but it's gotta be about the money at the end of the day. You've had so much early success in your career now. Um, does that raise your own expectations? Uh, do, you, do you think that you're going to win something every year? I think it would be pretty unrealistic to think I can continue the form I have been doing. But I mean, for sure, like confidence is high. I think um, I'm playing really well. I, think, I don't see the reason why I can't win a big tournament. But I mean, things could go against you, for sure. And like, you never know what could happen. Do you have any goals now for say 2012 or the future? I think becoming the first ever two-time EPT winner is like the number one goal because it's never been done before. And I think that would be like a great record to, to, to have. What's the end game? What's the long-term plan? I think for sure for the foreseeable future I'll be playing just I'll be playing a lot of live tournaments, a lot of online tournaments and um, just basically do what I'm doing, traveling around, playing the circuit. But I mean I don't know, 10, 15 years down the line. If I've got like, if I've settled down and got a family, do I, I probably don't want to do that. 
I want to talk about motivation. Um, after you've had so much success like this, is it difficult to motivate yourself to play online specifically to get into the grind? It's definitely harder than it used to be for sure. Um, especially like I think I get massive up for the big on uh, sorry the big live tournaments. But um, you definitely it's important to keep the hunger up though. I think um, it's very very difficult to win if you haven't got the hunger to win. You've played with the best and you hang around with a lot of the top UK talent. Is there someone in particular in poker that you admire? It's hard, really difficult to single people out, but one player that always sticks in my mind is Christopher Forson. And I just think he's just very, 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 very good. I've not seen him really make a mistake, and he's just very difficult to play against. On to PKR now. Um, this must be the first time in the last few days that you have encountered our software. It must be really different to everything that you're yeah, used to. Yeah, it's a lot of fun actually. You can massively um, tilt players a bit, in fact we've like rubbing them down and doing like the dance and stuff and like if you're beating them. I actually think it's r really fun for like the recreational player and like if you're playing just a few tables I absolutely love it. Now there is quite a bit of expectation on PKR to see you mix it up with the regulars and uh, and we want you to show them who's boss. Is that going to happen? Are you going to be around there? Um, I'm, still, I'm still adjusting to the software and just okay. getting used to it for now. But. Um, there could be an appearance in the future. Uh, cash game play, uh, how's your cash game compared to tournaments? You're best known for tournaments, that may be unfair, I don't know. I've always played actually a lot of heads up cash, so that's probably my strongest cash game. But um, for sure, bread and butter is tournament poker for me. All right, well it is time to uh, to go to some questions from the PKR community, a weird <coughs> and wonderful bunch, so I don't know what they've got in store. Uh, well, Bungie2468, a simple question, what did you do with your first big win? First big win, bought a car. Bought a car for the first big win. That was the R8. That was the R8, yeah. <laughs> nice. It was the first thing I bought. I bought it like two days after I won. I went straight to the showroom and bought it. Um, Dr. Jeel says, who was your toughest opponent in the 25K heads up? I think Anthony Guetta in um, the round before Gus Hansen. Owned me, to be honest. I, don't, I did not deserve to win the match. The first half of the match, he absolutely destroyed me and like I was lucky to still be in it. And then the second half, I actually like, talked to my friends about it and then came back and played a lot better. But he, I think he definitely like edged it overall and he was just really difficult to play against and played very, very well. Uh, Starsky asks, when was the first moment you realised you wanted to play poker full time? It wasn't like a breakthrough moment. I think it was more over like one or two years where I was like starting to make a little money and then I was starting to make more money. And I was, I never, at the start, I never thought I could do it as a living. Uh, finally, Smiler, he says uh, throughout the final of that 25k heads up, um, the commentators mentioned several times that you gave away live tells against Timoshenko. Uh, do you agree with that? Is this something that you discovered or you, um, you heard about? I saw the commentary. I'm not sure I totally agree with it. I think no. they may have just been saying it for something to say. I've spoken to a lot of people and like nobody's, nobody else seems to have picked anything up. So. Okay, I'm now okay we know. Now. Uh, the last question from them. Uh, this was probably the most popular question of all. Uh, why PKR? I was really... Um, Quite picky about sponsorship, actually. I, I've been approached by a few people, and I, um, I don't know. I just never felt right. I had some advice from some from older players and like um, some of my friends who like were experienced in that area, and they told me like not to jump in straight away to anything because um, you should always wait for the right deal. And then as soon as PKR came in, and I spoke to them. Like I just instantly was like really excited about the ideas that they had, and I thought it was a great UK company with like lots of potential. I thought it was great for me to be a part of. All right, well, that's the last of the questions from the community. Just a couple more from me. What's your next big live tournament going to be? I'm so unorganized. Um, <laughs> in, in December, there's a couple of things that I'm thinking of playing. There's the Prague Festival, there's the WBT, EPT there, and there's also the WBT and Epic Poker League in Vegas that so I'm thinking of going to as well. It's just, there's so much on. There's always a tournament every week. Um, and also GKPT London, which is, um, I think, it's around two weeks, one, one or two weeks away. I I'll definitely be playing that. That's, that's locked. The rest of them... I've probably decided the day before, like normally. Okay, well, we wish you the very best of luck and we can't wait to follow you over the next few months. Great, Jake, thanks a lot. Good talk to you.